Hello, SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded, and welcome to part four of a series, The Great Pyramid and the Royal Egyptian Cubit. And I'll be looking at some of the connections to there before we go too f uh, much further. But, uh, where am I? No, wrong one. So, uh, we're examining the Cubit at the Great Pyramid of Giza. Uh, how uh, all four sides are slightly different, both older and the most modern surveys are all agreeing on this. We can see the substantial difference between the southern and the northern face. Now, overall, as a percentage, it's rather small, but a 20 centimetre difference, we, just with a simple cord, they could have got all four sides very, very close, and certainly a lot closer than a t this difference between the north and the south especially the south being the longest the north being the shortest so if uh, as often said exactly pi over six meters then we find that in blue uh, that no one side is exactly 440 egyptian royal cubits uh, and as an average the egyptian royal cubit is very very close it's literally the width of a hair so that's the average of all four sides pi over 6 of the modern meter and when we say meter we now have a modern version of it there have been incarnations going back just the last few centuries and I want to examine that further but just when I say meter now I'm, I, I'm specifying the, the modern meter that you would have in your tape measure or ruler but so the average of all four sides gives us 0 0.5235555 literally a width of the uh, hairs vary uh, human hair varies from 40 microns to about 120 that's 40 microns so that's the, the thinnest human hair not just the, that's the difference but uh, that's as an average of all four sides but each side is different and is significant between the southern uh, the southern and the northern and if we include these we can actually extract some very very beautiful uh, coincidences let's call them for the moment and this comes back to the concept of geometry, Earth measure, and has often said that the Great Pyramid is scaled to the size of the Earth. It's uh, hinted at in the uh, published work by Cole, and that it's also geodesic or you know, Earth-based measures. But uh, that the perimeter of the Great Pyramid is uh, 30 seconds of meridional latitude. Well, that would make it one. So the perimeter of the pyramid times 43,200 should give us the equatorial circumference of the earth but it doesn't quite work out that way uh, this is only 30 feet different but 30 feet times 43,200 adds up to quite a bit and in it, which is extraordinary on its own it's very good but it actually gets much better than that if we start thinking about the pyramid as again separating each side and not just thinking of it as an average or as a two-dimensional drawing and also incorporating those slight variations in, and where they lead to um, and that's well the connection between the meter and the cubit now uh, a pendulum up until the 1930s and the quartz crystal a one meter long pendulum swung at 30 degrees. If you swing it more than 30 degrees, you affect the timing. So it, this is not just an arbitrary angle. And that section of arc is one is by definition pi over six meters or one Egyptian royal cubit or one second long. And we have this relationship there. Now I've got a more higher res of this picture here. Um, but the, the point is, you know, uh, there's like a saying I like. Uh, before enlightenment chop wood carry water after enlightenment chop wood and carry water being that small details count and we need to incorporate these smaller details now for instance that's that's the equator there now it's interesting that the angle of a pyramid is pr pretty much exact on where Greenwich is and that the one meter okay, now the, we're going back to 1812 the meter was different so just again as an illustration, not to get too specific, because when we narrow down that, it actually gets even better. But so at Greenwich, the pendulum being exactly 86,400 seconds per day. The further north or south you are from the equator, it affects uh, not only the pendulum, but even weights. So at, at the equator, 100 pounds weighs 100 pounds. The further you get away from the equator, the the weight of the pound actually changes weights and measures length 
a meter is a measure of length, but it's a measure of time as well. The pendulum, the one second, that's historically been the way to do it, but it also affects measures as well. And so that's a key point. We're talking weights and measures here, measurable, tan tangible evidence. And so time, measures of weight, degrees, and measures of length. They've all come, uh, even some recent up like in regards to pi and phi and all this other extraordinary coincidence in the pyramids connected to these basic items, measurement systems. Okay, but back, so again, the pendulum effect. Now, it just so happens that this particular, yeah, that, that the angle of the pyramid uh, and Greenwich have this nice cor uh, connection there. But the small variations that are pointed out in the, each side of the Great Pyramid and how it affects the um, the actual cubit rather than the average, is, it, it has profound implications for this meter-second pendulum relationship. Uh, there's also, so it's often said that the pyramid is exactly at 30 degrees north. Now, uh, along with degrees, we also have gradient and 30 degrees is 33.33 gradian, but another way of measuring an angle is radian. So essentially one circle is 360 degrees or 2 pi radian. 30 degrees is pi over 6, I've just rounded it off to 0 0.236, but that is pi over 6. So now it's interesting that this point of 30 degrees, that the, well, the centre of the Grand Gallery, which is a nice uh, lovely little number going on there in terms of degrees, uh, but that's pi kilometers south of 30 degrees. You can measure this in Google Earth or uh, Google Maps. But that's 0 0.2323 radian, which is a nice connection to, uh, as we examine further, the, the, uh, the smaller cubits created by the shorter sides of the pyramid. So if we include the slight variations on each side of the pyramid, this, and it's famously the relationship of the pyramid to pi and phi, at, at your idealized standard measures when each side is exactly 440 and to 280 high, we get a very close approximate of pi, phi, sorry, a very cl close approximate of phi. But if we include these small variations I pointed out between each side, this close approximate essentially becomes uh, as accurate as what you can get on paper uh, within, um, yeah, just beautiful connections. Now, the connection, uh, I'll do more, but the connection, uh, I've got to remember to put in the link to Alan Green. Uh, he's done some fantastic work on this as well. Uh, this is, he actually pointed out the relationship between one foot plus one Egyptian raw cubit plus one metre being, well, essentially six foot, again, you know, almost... Uh, 10 hairs difference and the so you, in an ideal world a person is as tall as they are from fingertip to fingertip so foot cubit and meter but this especially now the cubit and the meter relationship and that brings us back to the pendulum so a one meter long pendulum will at swung at 30 degrees within that or 15 degrees from resting has a one second amplitude back and forth every second even as it slows down it's still one second and the weight of the pendulum doesn't matter as long as the cent it, as long as it, the center of gravity is one meter from the uh, axis but that is that 30 degrees of arc one meter long one egyptian royal cubit equals one second equals one meter so there yeah, that's an egyptian royal cubit and that brings us back to so this circle would be a 2 metre diameter, 1 metre radius, 2 metre diameter. So 30 degrees would be an Egyptian raw cubit. Now if you were to draw a circle half that size with a 1 metre diameter, 60 degrees or 1 sixth of the circle would be an Egyptian raw cubit. Which brings us back to these, well, especially these small variations in each one. And I do believe that there's, okay, so Meron um, Mersan, he defined the one second um, pendulum and he defined it as 0 0.994 of a modern meter but he defined it at 45 degrees north of the equator that's an important point it's halfway between the equator and the poles but that's where now if you move north or south it changes uh, 1790 um, Tullyrand wanted to set again propose that to be a fish the the second be officially set as 
that one meter be officially defined has one second pendulum 45 degrees. So the meter very well was nearly 0 0.994 meters. This nearly happened. Now, that also happened with uh, at the same year. George Washington um, and Thomas Jefferson were planning on, so the American foot is still the English foot, but when they were setting up uh, the USA, they wanted to change the US foot to be 0 0.33146 meters or one third of this. Um, and that was again, now there'd been a little bit more work done, but that was a one second pendulum at 45 degrees north, 994 meters. Did I do a typo? I think I've got it. Uh, either way, but that's so one yard in the US was very well going to be 0 0.994 meters or a one second pendulum. 45 degrees north of the equator so the meter and the and the second have had a long relationship now I won't go into the history of it but now we have a meter which is got a bit of mucking around going on there it's the meter defines a speed of light the speed of light defines the meter it's this weird sort of chicken and egg thing going on now but this is how it was at the time and historically speaking one second is one meter and that very essentially defines the Egyptian royal cubit 30 degree pendulum. Now there are slight variations depending how north you go so one meter pendulum pi over six meters this is now the modern meter the meter which was only six millimeters short you know so it's got half a, half a finger or even half a width of a finger or even less depending. And now again those connections to the actual point of the pyramid and the radian and the radian to 30 degrees north and that pi meters relationship which is happening there pi kilometers sorry now okay, let's go hard Mohenjo-Daro the Mohenjo-Daro unit of measure the foot let's just call it well three of those is 3.3 .3 meters which is 1.0058 so one meter and six millimeters now that's an important uh, point because if you want to scale the size of it, now firstly the pyramid, this square on the inside is the pyramid, these four blocks at the corner are called sockets, they now give the base of the pyramid an extra little bit of length. That's now we have a slightly larger pyramid base length if you include the sockets and then divide that by 440, what do we get? We get 50 0.5266 meters, three millimeters longer, just a touch over three millimeters longer than the Egyptian royal cubit at a meter, and that is created by a yard or three Mohenjo-Daro feet, which are also Sumerian and later Saxon. Zero, 1.00584 meters creates a cubit at 30 degrees, swinging at the second which defines the base of the pyramid including the sockets now that's relevant so that's you know you get an idea of the sockets there's a better uh, illustration of the sockets there but that pendulum created by that slightly longer meter one meter and five one meter and six millimeters let's call it for now which is created by the Mahenjadaro unit of measure well so now if that now gives us so if you stand at the corner of a pyramid and include the sockets that maximum visible length is the rotational speed of the Earth per second. 86,400 seconds per day, as in the pendulum, you get the circumference of the Earth. And, and well, spot on. Uh, you're about two kilometers off, which is in, because of the bulging of the Earth, tidal bulging, that's as good as you know, you're going to get, which brings us back to the concept of geometry, Earth measure, or geodetic measures and how this pyramid was first sort of noticed to be very close to 30 seconds of um, meridian latitude at the equator. Time, the meter, these units of length come together and uh, th and when we start connecting it to especially to phi and to pi and to all these other connections the you're really stretching coincidence to a point at some point coincidence becomes a pattern or at least a more probable pattern than just to say coincidence because I don't want to hear it because I've chosen to believe that people in the past couldn't do what people pre-electricity were able to achieve. Anyway, 
with that. Cheerio and have a good one.